Sessions, and welcome to the See You Try show, which is an effort of the Trauma and Resiliency Initiative. So I'm here today to sort of kick off our inaugural show, and we want to use this for two purposes. One is to tell you some of the work that we're doing with the Trauma and Resiliency Initiative, and then also because we're starting this really amazing pilot in the community where we're trying to get more volunteers involved to help families who've been impacted by gun violence. And so we thought we would kick off our first show of talking about that. Yes. I'm Do you excited. want to introduce yourselves? Hi, I'm Samira. I'm the program assistant for CU Trauma and Resilience Initiative. And I'm excited to talk about um, our new call crisis response effort um, and then the additional trainings we have coming up this month. <clears throat> Hi, I'm Kaja Kelly and I'm one of the victims of the gun violence. And I'm just here to share my experience and how these young ladies was a part of me to grow up back to the community or life in general. Thank you. So let's start off, I'm gonna just sort of give, you guys will get a chance to overhear a little bit about the Trauma and Resiliency Initiative and then we'll go right into talking about your story, Kaja. Okay. Um, and so the Trauma and Resiliency Initiative for people who aren't aware um, is an effort that's been in town for about three years and we've been trying to educate the community about trauma but also responding to people who've been impacted by trauma yes. and particularly gun violence. It, it, so we've done a lot of work sort of informal, a lot of people know about things that we've done. Maybe you've seen us on Facebook or Instagram okay. or those kinds of things. <laughs> okay. And we're trying to expand people's involvement yes. in the community Absolutely. about what, what's going on because we can't do it by ourselves and we exactly. need everybody's help. Exactly. So the most, um, one of the exciting things that we're having is uh, we're launching actually this weekend a effort with Carl where we're having volunteers be available to go out to the hospital when people come in who've been impacted by gun violence uh, to respond to that. And we're gonna do that slow and steady. That's, that's um, wonderful. Yeah, we're gonna do I it slow and steady. <laughs> um, but, uh, but we need a whole bunch of people in place to answer calls, to be available, to be available during those incidents and yeah. then afterwards. And that's where I guess I thought you, a conversation about what we did to help you, Kaja, could help. Yeah. And uh, yeah. is it okay for me to call you KK? Because that's how yeah, I know how to call you. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, let me we get us formal. Okay, okay, okay. Years, okay. You know, I was like, so, is, it, yeah. is it important? Can I call yes, you KK? Yes. So I thought it was important for maybe us to talk a little bit about our experience together. Okay. And then at the end, I'll do a pitch about how people can get involved. How about All that? All right, yeah. Okay. Yeah. So anything that you want to add, Samira? Um, no, after a, we talk about... <laughs> I did it. Samira. <laughs> You're totally fine. Um, after hearing about KK's story um, and talking about our um, effort to get more volunteers, we want more community members mm -hmm. um, involved because those are the people who, one, are directly impacted, two, who are out there living with people who mm -hmm. are impacted, um, and it makes a difference for yes. to have somebody who is relatable to you, who's a family, who's a friend, um, somebody that you can trust and understand. and. So yeah. we're hopeful that after hearing about our efforts and hearing KK's story, you'll be more interested to learn um, how to get involved. Okay. Okay. So the, the scene is yours. So KK, do you want to tell us a little bit about how, unfortunately, we came to meet each other? Well, I was involved in a shooting a couple of years ago and um, almost, you know, could have had my family you know, being one of the victims that who couldn't be here today. But at the moment after that, I end up shifting to a hotel because of the kids and the trauma they were going through. And I end up meeting Karen through the police station. And she came in like a warrior, I want to tell you that. And because um, I didn't really have too many people have my back. And she was one of the people that really drug her team into the dirt to get me and my kids back on our feet. And I appreciate you for that. I don't even want to cry because mm -hmm. I'm in a good place right now because mostly of her. And um, I gave her a hard time. <laughs> and she knew it was, you know, the battle that I was just in and that impacted me and my family. It wasn't a hard feeling towards her. And she steady stood on her ground on her feet and said, what can I do for you? And I told her, give me a better environment 
because I'm not this type of environment. I didn't, you know, I was just living there. And that's what she did. Moving me, workers, I mean, people just coming from everywhere, like picking up boxes, kids playing in the yard, being kids again, like, in matters of seconds. I mean, you know, it took weeks and months, but it was just constant. She was constantly moving, like keeping me occupied, keeping my kids occupied, therapy, you know, people from the community to help out with the kids, like with camp or jobs or, you know, summer uh, passes to swim and, you know, just be children again. And that helped a lot, YMCA or, you know, and that really, really helped me and my family a whole lot, a whole lot. My kids are in a better place. We got our therapy. Uh, they working. My oldest daughter is out on her own. No children. <laughs> Thank you. Yeah. And um, my son, he's he just made 18, and he's back and forth doing his thing. But he's calmed down, you know, a whole lot also. And the 12 year old who really impacted us the hardest is doing a better in a better space also, and going out more, being friendly, you know, because. That uh, Fortnite, she was stuck to that TV and they wanted to go nowhere. <laughs> Me and her be stuck in the house, but Karen got us out the house, kept us going, kept us moving, kept us, you know, being involved with more supportive people who's willing to help just like if it would have happened to them because we're neighbors. The community, I don't care if we're cross the street, cross town, on the other side. At the end of the day, we're going to end up bumping the heads in the community. If it's a school, gas station, Walmart, or whatever, and that's what she did. She got Walmart, the schools, the libraries, everybody to pitch in to help me and my kids get back comfortable to live again. And I'm blessed to have her in my life because I ain't had that much support at that moment. And two, I can call her today, so I do have it now. And that's all I got to say. Thank you, and thank you very much. Thank you. Uh -huh. So I'm going to kind of break down. KK, you said a lot. So first of all, oh, I'm not going to. Oh, okay. I, I know it was I'm beautiful and amazing. Oh, yeah. no, I've been it's in a good space. I was going, you know, yeah, no, it was great. I would have been wonderful. balling for real for no, both times no. because, you know, it's sometimes being in a community. I'm a community type of person, too. So the person who died near, you know, that had me involved in the situation, I knew that person. You know what I'm saying? Me and him had a relationship in some time of our years that I've been knowing him before he died, you know, how he died, but, you know, so um, that's why me and her really, she didn't let go of me, you know what I'm saying, even though I wanted to fall and push her down and just walk over her like, uh, like, she did not let go of me, like, you're going to stand up, I'm still, I'm going to stand here and I'm going to get you up, and that's what she did, that's all I asked for, and that's what she did, and I told her, you, you do what you ask for me, I'm going to give you that, and I've been taking care of my kids like I've been doing before I met her, but better. Sounds great. Mm -hmm. So again, I'm gonna break you down. All okay. right. So now I'm not not gonna break you down literally, but I wanna just sort of make so that, make sure that people understand. Because mm -hmm. thank you, first of all, for just being so open and for sharing. Yeah, because I was stuck for a little minute at first, though. You know, okay. even after you helped me, I was stuck a little bit. But by the resources you gave us, I came up out of it. You know what yeah. I'm saying? Because that wasn't the first time it happened to me. It's just the first time happened to me as a parent. Yeah. You know, it happened to me several times as a kid. Yeah. And the way my kids reacted towards me, it was just, I couldn't stand. Yeah. And yeah. I couldn't. I, I, and I was by myself. But she came in and I wasn't. So her program has uh, been three years, but I feel like 30. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, well, we need to continue on to 30 because that get us more as a community, wherever you are, California, at whatever you want to be in Texas or whatever, the community, us as people and human beings, the community is what build each other to continue life going. And that's it. Okay. I'm going to give okay. you a break. All right. So I'm going to give you a break. So <gasps> I want to explain it. No, no, no. It's <laughs> beautiful. So I want to explain to everybody a little bit because it sounds like the program and I just want to explain to a little bit about for people who don't know. Okay. So a few years ago, there were a number of people in the community who said we want to do something about community violence. And yeah. we thought a lot about what to do. And we're an effort of the Champaign County Community Coalition. And um as a working group, the trauma working group said, what needs to happen is when crisis comes, we need people from the neighborhood who can go in and support mm -hmm. other people from neighborhoods 
uh, to help them get back on their feet. And we know like in the middle of a crisis, what you said was most of us feel isolated and we feel disconnected and we don't have support or we can't find our support, um, so right? We don't know where it is. Um, so I'm gonna disclose just a little bit. Like for example, there were a number of people in your life but when you they are in the would. middle of but then when you're in the middle of a stress, you can't see them. You, hear you, from you them, them be, right? Wait, so, one of them asked me, told me this: "What you want me? To ask me what you want me to do." Yeah. I was like, I was confused and stressed and, and, and didn't know what to do myself. Yeah. I'm like, "What you want me to do?" Yeah. I mean, how am I supposed to teach you that when I didn't know it myself? Yeah. That's why I'm yeah. calling out That's for support. Right. But Karen was right there, and she taught me what to do, basically, or continued what I've been doing, but helped me get up from that trauma to continue to do what I've been doing, you know, cause it, like she said, made me isolated. Yeah, Just and the people who were in your life who didn't realize that you were hurting, yep. part of what we did was sort of bring them together and feel yep. reconnected so that they yep. could know how to support you. Yep. Um, and there were, like, in, and I'll, you keep using me, but I brought I in mean, other, other people. But no, there, I, I, brought, mean, yeah, I don't uh -huh, want to say, uh -huh. I don't know all you know, it's names. Okay. It's yeah. her team. But you brought her in team. other people, right, who you know, helped in other, you know, who yeah. helped keep the kids. Yeah. And they kept the kids. kids busy. Gave us a place to stay for weeks, uh, food vouchers, all types of stuff. She, that's why I'm saying the resources. If it was Walmart, the library, the schools. She just pulled it out of her team, and like I said, I couldn't move all my furniture and all that stuff. Her team helped men came from nowhere picking up box. I didn't have to say a word really, you know, because I was what I was gonna do. Really, literally nothing for real. Like I didn't have the end the drive, and you know, and by her, her and her team swooping up and just not saying nothing, just moving, I. Follow suit, and I was I was the leader. That was my pack, you know, and I couldn't do it though. But they came in and and now I'm back up on them. Yes, <laughs> yes. <laughs> She's living proof of what it means to be resilient, right? Yeah. And 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 I think sometimes we forget when bad things happen that with a little bit of support and care and unconditional love and the community yeah. sort of wrapping around. Uh, things can get on, you know, people can recover and get back on their feet. Yep. And you said, you hinted at this, but uh, your kids ended up being okay, right? Right, and that's um, what and, made me and, okay. Yeah, and had... because you know, that was my main worry, that my daughter passed out and hit that concrete in front of that hotel as soon as we got out the car after that stuff happened. What am I supposed I couldn't even catch her, you know what I'm saying? And I just imagine when I was that little girl at eight years old seeing my first shooting with somebody getting their head blown off, my mama didn't catch me at all and left me right there. My daughter said, I didn't want to go back there. And I didn't take her back. And I refused to, because I mean, I don't know. And then I just helped me, the community, she helped me get in. I uplift me and show my kids, even though it was all in my name too. Remember that. <laughs> <laughs> you gotta have a name also. You can't be doing bad. That's why I said I'll be in the community, but. I don't be knowing too much like that, man. So you got to have both and both, you know? So it got us where we needed to be, and we cooling. We all right now. So, I mean, it's still a little fight, but we all right. We yeah. better off than yeah. where we started from yeah. at that time when we met her because of you and your team. And the community. And I mean, that's yeah, what I'm yeah, saying. Yeah, no, yeah, I didn't know them yeah. until no, you I, went yeah. in there fighting like, hey, I know you and she need, and I came and Kai K, you need to introduce you to, and I'm like, how you doing? But I met them all through you. Thank you. You know, so yeah. if you didn't have the drive to get this type of organization together for me, then I mean, I would never knew them people at all like that. I just probably walked past them all the time at the fire department or at the gas station yeah. or at the schools or at the library and wouldn't even think that I can ask them for help. Yeah. Like, you showed me I can, yeah. you know? And uh, that's what made us feel alive again. So I'm gonna pause for a second. I did have a question, one more Go question, ahead. but I, do you have anything that you wanna ask or, or yeah? Well, one thing I, um, that you keep saying is like, you didn't, Karen introduced you to these different organizations and these different people who were able to give you different types of support. And so I think that's one thing that, to highlight that we do is that we connect you with the resources that you need. Right. So we're triaging to see like what mm -hmm. you need, what your family needs, what type of support will be right. most useful for you in that moment, and how can that um, type of support continue after the situation or the crisis has died down. And I think that's one of the 
best things about what we do is that we're able to bring in people from the community and that's why it's mm -hmm. so important for us to get more people involved so that we can one learn about other things that are going on in the community because we may not know that hey right. this person is able to give you this type of treatment or this person right. you know has this resource available for anybody who f meets this meet this criteria right um, and so that's one of the things that we're really trying to push for and in KK situation uh, it was a lot of just regular, ordinary people who weren't necessarily with organizations. I mean, mm -hmm. part of it was yeah, like letting like people who work, for, yeah, yes. like letting people who work with organizations do what they need to do. Mm -hmm. But also just neighbors and people mm -hmm. sort of stepping up. So one of the big things that you can imagine, people are always like, "Okay, I'm in the community and I don't have any special skills or whatever. How can I help? What would you say to somebody who's like?" You know, I'm not special. I'm not a therapist. What do I need to do? What would you tell to to those people who have time food and love? Drive. Okay, so you can you could just think of a food drive because at that moment the mom is not thinking about eating, feed nobody or nothing. I'm gonna tell you that. You know, I went days, weeks, like one hungry, just sitting there, like literally stuck watching my kids until she came back or came back and like, I need this from you. And I'm looking like this. She's like, KK, you got to get it up. I made you a list. And I'm just like, <laughs> and like, you know, I'm, I'm, cause my survivor mode was different from me meeting her. So mm -hmm. I, I'm, you know, in my own survivor mode, but by me meeting her, it, it taught me a different on top of what I know. You know what I'm saying? So that's how it went. So you want to tell people, start where they are. Everybody has yes. something they can Speak contribute. Up. Closed mouth don't get fed. That <laughs> model works. I'm telling you, the old school <laughs> tell you models for a reason. And closed mouth don't get fed. And I'm usually, like, always giving out resources. This is a good resources. It's happening every day. You know what I'm saying? It just happened to, what, the little 10-year-old boy. I was in the salon getting my hair done and um, signed a card for that baby. You know what I'm saying? That could have been my 11-year-old, 12-year-old now, you know, walking through the hallway, going to the bathroom, getting some Kool-Aid, whatever, and could have been the same one that got shot if she wasn't in the shooting two years ago, you know? It, it's got to stop, and um, we got to come together, and that's what I got out of her, her uh, organization with everybody who was with her and with, you know, I can't name everybody, like I said, but it's okay. the whole community did come together, and that's what we need out of more of us people, and especially parents on down to teach to the next generation. The community is us. Yeah. So, yeah. Do what you gonna so, do with it? Because yeah. <laughs> I'm gonna be on this team over yeah. here. We're gonna get more victims out of this stuff. Cause yeah, it's yeah. and try to get less victims. You know, we're gonna get the more we get in tune with and touch. Get them out of that, but try to make them more better people, not to make another one. Is what I'm saying. You yeah. know. So. And yes, so thank you. Yeah. Thank you so much for all of the sharing and for what you <laughs> do constantly. First of all, you continue to I'm do. I'm a cancer. That's, I'm you a continue love. to do good work, right? <laughs> so, like you continue to sort of. I can't be knocked down. And that's, yeah, yeah, you brought no. me up, and yeah. I appreciate it. And that's what we all need to do for each yeah. other. Mm -hmm. So I want to make a little bit of a pitch, right? Okay. So I'm hoping that people have heard KK's story and are like, you're sitting in your living room and you're thinking, I could help. I could, I could help with food. I could help with transportation. I could be a listening ear. I could um, help maybe um, help keep kids busy. I am yeah. willing to do that. Like, I am interested that you could see yourself as somebody sure. who could do that. You know, I'm the type where my son got in trouble and he ended up in this program called Dream for young men and men, whatever. And the young man said, we're moving again. We need a refrigerator. I had two refrigerators. Yeah. You know what I did? Gave him one of my my refrigerators. I mean, my son not only going there, but the thought of having young men who have doesn't have fathers or uplifting uh, mm -hmm. role models, and for him to you know all you need is a refrigerator, you go a refrigerator and yeah. make sure he go. I'll make sure he gonna be there. <laughs> and you know it's just that's being part of the community that's like right. cuz if my son don't go he still has that refrigerator to make yeah. another kid may go and another kid will grow that's it's right. just okay. continue on that's you right know? yeah so. okay and so part of what we know right, and believe I, KK you've said this over and over again which what? is super important is that what it means to be in community is 
communities it's look us. after each other. Us. And so that is the whole point of why trauma and resiliency. They're going to go on prom together. Yeah, They're going to yeah, graduate exactly. together. <laughs> that is the They're going to date whole together. They're going to have kids together. Why you know, we exist is because we want, we believe Make business what, together. That's right. Like so. that we believe that strong communities look out for each other mm -hmm. and take care of each other. And, the, and we especially look out for people who are most, most vulnerable. Yeah. Um, we were just at the... Yeah. I was at the MLK celebration at King okay. on Monday. Um, at, I'm Ms. sorry, MLK celebration. celebration at Urbana um, that the in, um, the Interact Club put together, okay. and that's one of the things that we were talking about. Is you know, King's dream was to create communities Peace. that were loving and caring, and caring and just and fair mm -hmm. that looked out for each other. Right. And a lot of times, right, we sit around and are like, what can we do? Well, what you could do is... Have a block party. Yeah, that's yeah. right. Know look your out. neighbor. That's right. Look you out. know what I'm saying? That's what I'm doing in my community oh, right, right, right now with my kids. You know, at yeah. the new place, yeah. you know, I'm at now, even though it was yeah. from the place you got me from, I moved again. But we had a block party. Yeah. Every neighbor came out, even the old, old ones, you yeah. know what I'm saying, that own their houses and all, you know. They came out, we had a block party, and it was in my parking lot. You know, oh, I don't wow. like people, but I love people. <laughs> <laughs> and, 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 right, so we the had whole a good each time one, teach and, one, and reach one, yes. yes. That's what we did. Had a good time, and everybody bought a nice big dish for everybody to share differently from cultures and all. And oh. smack beers like Steve Austin. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> we didn't, we didn't rest at all, but we had a good time. So, and some wine. Somebody made some homemade wine. Wow. And so, I mean, stuff like that. You could teach me that. I mean, yeah, look at all the potential. All the, yeah, you know, and yeah. the building and stuff like that. So, I'll be over there with my jigsaw and stuff now. <laughs> so, you know, that move was real good because, you know, I've been trying to get that, yeah. that room for my dr drills and stuff yeah. and tools. So, oh, wow. so yeah. Okay. <laughs> great, great, great. Yeah. So, if people are happy listening, I just want to tell you a little bit about how to be involved. Um, Samira, do you want to tell people about our upcoming training? Yes. So, mm -hmm. we have two upcoming trainings, actually. It's called our Healing Solutions Training. Um, it's a 40-hour intensive, um, interactive training um, that educates people on trauma, how to build resilience, the best practices um, to address community violence, and this training is for anyone, community members, um, people who are interested in being volunteers, um, community providers, anyone who wants to work or will continue to work with people who have been impacted by some type of trauma mm -hmm. or community violence, um, this is for you because <laughs> one, we need more volunteers, um, and two, this will allow you to improve your, um, your trauma-informed practices. And I just want to add, we really, 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 really um, want people, because a lot of times people are like, again, I don't know what to do. I don't know how to help. Yeah, um, I mean, know that we're training that's you. That's what trauma you, do to you. You're going to have even a lot know what of training to do around. If you don't have the training, that's right. you really get stuck. I'm just. That's right. And now I went through, you know, but like I said, being a mother and had to protect four children and it, we were involved in it. it. It was just, I was stuck. I mean, I didn't have the training, like, snap out of it. You yeah. know what I'm saying? So. I think I'm about to take this class. Okay, so. great. <laughs> it's okay, okay yeah, so, no, 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 but uh, so, I'll so, take this class. So so I'll have some like, it, it is good yes. for you. Yes. It is good for, for my children, children to go back. Absolutely, and, that's right. You know, all of that. Um, and probably take some, you know, steal that that tense off my shoulder, you know? Oh, absolutely, because yeah. so. it is good. But, but if you are somebody, again, who are out there and you were like, what do I do? I want to get involved. Come to our training. Yeah. You, we will give you all the tools you need for your toolbox uh, to wow, help you nice. be effective at helping other people. And bring a friend. I so will. doing this training with somebody, like if you're a part of a church, a community group, um, we need teams of people who provide that kind of support that KK was talking about. Mm -hmm. And it's easier if you already know them. So bring a girlfriend, uh, somebody from your group, um, and get involved. Uh, yeah. So please, 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 the way that you reach us is... I mean, you just can for eat. the knowledge. <laughs> yes. I like to pick up classes. You say it's free. It's free. I need the knowledge. Free. Knowledge ain't never free. They told me I'm on student loans right now. So okay. I'm just saying. So free. <laughs> I would take the um, class. I'm going to do a quick pitch. So you can email us at cuneighborhoodchampions at gmail.com or visit us on Facebook 
um, at CU Trauma and Resiliency Initiative. And information is up on everywhere. Uh, and you can also, for those people who are a little bit geeky and techy, uh, there is, you can go to something called Eventbrite and register for all of our trainings. We offer CEUs and certificates. Uh, we have an agreement where if you've got, you need um, credit for community service, we can even hook you up with some community service credit. We really try to community think about service it. Community service will wheel them in, I'm telling you. These we people really, out really here. want to get the community saying. involved in helping out. Mm -hmm. Keep y'all um, out of trouble. That's right. <laughs> <laughs> and I know the last pitch, and then we'll do, we'll remind you of how to find us again, um, and also give you a phone number. But yes, so um, we after you go through this training, we hope that you will be interested in helping us with our call crisis response um, effort, and so that's launching the, tonight actually. Oh, yeah. um, and so that's for anyone who is willing to go to. Um, is willing to volunteer and come to Carl Hospital to provide any type of comfort and care for families who have been impacted by gun violence. Um, if you need any type of linkages to resources in the community, we can also do that as you can also do that as a volunteer. Um, and also, if you think if you are feel as though like something will happen or um, you just need another shoulder to lean on, come for yourself. Here we yeah. are. That's right. And last but not least. Um, so find us, and I, I keep mentioning the Trauma and Resiliency Initiative, the show is the See You Try, but know that we're a part of a large network of people that are a part of our community violence okay. response team. So Champaign-Urbana Area Project, the Youth yes. and Family Peer Support Alliance, um, the NAACP, okay. other organizations are all involved oh, in this yeah. effort. And so I'm leaving people out, not for scholars, not so because I <laughs> want to, but just because my brain is being fuzzy right now. But no, um, being a part of this effort means that you, we can find a place for you in this larger yes, network. We can absolutely. plug you in. We just need help. And so I'm counting on folks. So and and next. Next time we're on, we're going to talk about other things that are happening in the community. We won't yeah. always be plugging we, volunteers. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> know that uh, we will profile like good things that other organizations that are partner, partnering with us. So we want you to stick around because we'll continue to talk about things that hurt us, like yeah. trauma, but also things that help Hailed heal us. us. Mm. Um, and I didn't do a phone number, but I'm going to throw that in. Uh, I said you can visit us on Facebook, but if you want us to, call, if you want to call us, you can reach us at 217-673-7122. Uh, Again, that phone number is 217-673-7122. Um, thank you.